Well, good morning. Good morning. It is the Sunday of Passion today, so we will be reading a long text. Oops. Someday I'll learn when we start, right? <laughs> I was eager to get started on church today. Um, yesterday, uh, we celebrated Travis's uh, life and his journey, and I know that the Pulsons were celebrating with uh, Joyce and her dad's celebration of life in Regis's, and so we celebrate, and, and yet it's a sad time. Well, we do celebrate those lives that have been given now back to the Father. So this week is a busy week. I don't know if anyone realized that it is an awesome week, though. Tomorrow we'll still have Bible study. Then we have our reflection time on Wednesday. Monday, Thursday, service on Thursday. Then Friday on Friday. And then Easter Sunday. It is an amazing time of year for us. Uh, as we go through this week. So just watch your announcements, or uh, watch your bulletin, I put it in, and I'll put it in the emails as well. Uh, we will, it would like to invite those of you who would like to come back to the rail for communion, bring your little packet with you. Um, as I did last week, I wiped the rail in between each of the tables. So it is, it is sanitized to, to some level, but I think it's important for us to start to come back together, and we'll look at how many people are, are gathering up here at one time, but please feel free um, to come back and celebrate at this altar and at this rail. But today is also, it's, you didn't know about it, Kieran and Tim Chapel will be joining us today, so we will be doing reception with the members today. So that's kind of an exciting time uh, that we're going to do that today. So we celebrate in that as well. I think that's the only thing I have. Donna's doing, okay, she's right now going to stay in Topeka with Regina for a little while until we can get some answers to some issues, but she's doing okay. As well as, I mean, it's just, we don't like getting old, do we? We don't like aging up any, and it's everyone shaking their head. Nope, we don't like it at all. So we all know those, those stories, but she's doing okay. Um, I think that's what I have to announce today. So let us stand and begin with our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought or deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained servant of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will sing hymn number 26 in our three books. Thank mm -hmm. you.
than an advent, and it almost was more appropriate probably to sing in Holy Week. And it's an interesting dynamic between the meanings of both of those seasons and what that means. So it always catches me when I think we do make an advent when we do. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who want to hear their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us face each other, 
Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? We will read the song responsibly. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish, and my ears by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction, and my bones grow weak. Because of all my enemies, I am the utter contempt of my neighbors, and, a, and an object of dread to my closest friends. Those who see me on the street flee from me. I am forgotten as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery. For I hear many whispering, terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. The second lesson comes from Philippians, verse 2. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by being obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. 
follow him. Say to the owner of the house, he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room? Where I may eat the Passover and with my disciples. He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, the one who is eating with me. And they were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied. One who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly, I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung him, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will all fall away, Jesus told them. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, Even if all fall away, I will not. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, Today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourselves will, will disown me three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter and James and John along with him. And he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Could you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing that the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. And when he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping? Resting? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion? said Jesus. That you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, 
and you did not arrest me, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. There he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. They did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but the statements did not agree. Then someone stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet even then, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses? He asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists, and said, Prophesy. And the guards took him and beat him. Up here was a blow in the courtyard. One of the servant girls of the high priest came by. And when she saw Peter warning himself, she looked closely at, him, closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene Jesus, she said. He denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said. And went away into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. And again, he denied it. And after a little while, those standing here said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses, and he swore them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the words Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times, and he broke down and wept. Very early in the morning, the chief priests and the elders and the teachers of the law and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus and led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. You want me to release to you the king of the Jews, asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priest had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one to who you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them, crucify him! They shouted, Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate, but they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. 
he had Jesus loved and handed him over to be crucified. Soldiers, put Jesus away into the palace, that is the freedom, and call together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him and then twisted a, together a crown of thorns and set it on him. They began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it, and they crucified him. Dividing up, up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charges against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, Come down from the cross and save yourselves. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At noon. Darkness came on the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, leave us sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of those standing near heard this. They said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, and put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the Son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. It was preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned, from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. There's not a lot we can say, is there, about the reading. In fact, often, we don't do a sermon. But I want us to think about something. 
Although there, there are some words in that reading that are pretty powerful for us. Maybe it is that we already know the rest of the story. Maybe it is that 2020 is hindsight. I took a, most of you know what this is, right? Yeah? Is it an eye chart? Yeah, it's kind of like we see it the, when we go to the eye doctor. I've been looking at this chart. Actually, I kind of, it, it's really sad. I started memorizing some of the order of the letters. And you go to the same eye doctor all the time. It's always the same order. So I actually have memorized, <laughs> I only want to tell my eye doctor that, that I actually memorized part of where the letters are. Well, 2020 means you can read this bottom line from 10 feet away. Without my glasses, there's not a chance. And yet, God, God has already told us the story. So when we read this lesson, we are already experiencing it. This is the world we live in. And we are already recipients of 2020 vision. To live eternally in his kingdom is about doing the ministry. See, the disciples were confused. They would look at their eye chart and make a history and not understand. Poor Peter just couldn't get it. The people didn't get it. They'd rather have an insurrectionist be released instead of the one who would give life. We are looking at Jesus in 2020 vision. We already know the story. You and I can look in backwards into history and know what that means for you and me. For you and me, the story is profound and it's telling. For you and me, let us not be like Peter and want to fall asleep and not hear the cry of the people let you and I not be as Judas and want to take instead of give. Let us be the disciples who wanted to learn and to give our hearts and our hands in service. That's the call of Passion Sunday, is to become passionate about the ministry we do to be passionate about holding our people. We've learned a lot this last year. I have to tell you, from a year ago, when I stood here with all of, maybe three of us, four of us, doing a Palm Sunday service, it is phenomenal. We have come a long ways in understanding the story of Jesus, maybe in a new way. Maybe now is the time we don't run anymore. Well, maybe we do. We run to the foot of Jesus. We run to the foot of the cross. We run to meet the Savior who now gives his life in this week for you and me. Maybe singing uh, our beginning hymn was appropriate. donkey and all of that imagery fits the day most appropriately. Amen. We'll sing hymn number 117.
Christ in the creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And of the power of the Holy Spirit, he became an incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and then was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son he is worshiping Lord God, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Karen and Tim, I invite you to come forward. Karen and Tim have asked to have joined this congregation and to become part of this community. And so today we welcome you as members of this congregation to join with us in worshiping God, hearing his word, and sharing his supper, proclaiming the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, serving all people and striving for justice and peace in the world. Let us continue in our prayers. Oh God, today we do pray for our world. We ask to hold all leaders in our thoughts and prayers and give them strength and wisdom to make the right decisions. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our country. Let us hold the people of Boulder, Colorado in our prayers. The people of all the states who have been affected by tornadoes and weather. Let us hold all people in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our community to guide us in the direction you would have each of us go in living and serving you in this place. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who suffer from illness. We continue to hold Stan and Larry, Debbie and Jean following her head surgery and all others who lift up in our hearts and our minds. Lord, in your mercy. And God, we do ask that you hold the family of Travis Landreth, Jolene Ekstrom, Joyce Polson, in your, in your hands. And we hold them as they have celebrated the homecoming of their family. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And this day we do ask that you be with Karen and Tim as they join this congregation. That they become willing servants to do as you've asked them to do, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for these new members of our congregation. By your life giving power, bind us to each other in you, strengthening us for service, support us all our days, and bring us at length to the day when all your children will be one with you. Amen. Peace the Lord be with you all. We haven't said that for a while, have we? So, Karen and Tim, here's your certificate and your envelopes. Why don't you turn around and let everyone, they already know who you are, I think. But let's welcome Karen and Tim. Thank you. <laughs>
gives. But then we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. You have each received the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ as a sign of his love. We know this day that we are to go forth to love and serve, to share his story and his name. Amen. 
Amen.